So as I continue to build out the new public aquarium, I'm facing a number of challenges. Specifically, how am I going to get a number of these things done that I want to get done in a unique way that is going to be useful for me, but you guys haven't seen before. And I always think to myself, well, why don't we have something? <laughs> this is where things get a little ridiculous with this video. Why don't we have something that, you know, allows us to not only filter the aquarium water, but I want to polish it. I want to, I want to mechanically filter it. I want to biologically filter it. I also want to skim the water surface because we do not like a lot of that, you know, protein buildup that can potentially happen at the top of an aquarium. But I also want to be able to use it as a gravel vacuum. Basically, all in one filter that is incredibly useful for so many different things. So today, I'm taking some of my old ideas and older videos and mashing it up to create essentially the ultimate do-it-yourself filter that honestly shouldn't cost you more than $20. This is gonna be something that I think everybody can not only build, but you should probably just have it. We're gonna build it first, and then uh, I'm gonna talk to you in, uh, about sizing it and how to scale it up to even bigger aquariums, etc. And of course, see it in action, and wait till you see that. Now, personally, I'm building something incredibly similar for this, but the, what I'm going to be showing you is going to be good for anything like up to 50 gallons in size. And the one I'm building is, of course, going to be built uh, for tanks up to like 700 gallons type of thing. And <laughs> we're almost there. What really triggered this video is I was on Amazon the other day. And I started noticing like aquarium equipment is getting like much more affordable than I could ever remember. And I mean, aquarium pumps are now like 15 bucks. If you want to do this project though, you just need a pump like this. Output, input, but the input's got to kind of be like a spout. You want to stay away from the pumps that are like this where there is no real input. It's just through at the bottom through these slats, even though it does have a top spout. These work great for other purposes, but just not for this. Now, obviously it's a water bottle and these are incredibly scalable. So you can go bigger and bigger. What we're gonna do though is incredibly simple. We're gonna take this bottle that we drilled that hole into, put it in the top of this power head and bam, the filter's almost done. You've seen me do this similar to before. This one's gonna be a little bit better. I'm gonna take some ceramic media for the biological media. And that would typically be enough for like a, you know, a 30 gallon tank right there. If you don't want ceramic media, go get some lava rock, smash it up into small pieces. It's highly porous biological media. It'll do the same thing. I'm just using what I have on hand for the purpose of the video. Then I'm some filter flush. See me this, use this stuff all the time. Hold it up, boom, boom. Done. We've got mechanical filtration, we've got biological filtration, we have water circulation. Because this is gonna go near the surface of the water, it's also a surface skimmer. I'll show you how it's gonna become a gravel vacuum in a second. You wanna, you wanna scale it up and go bigger? Just use a different bottle. This one here, probably be good for 50 gallons. Now, of course, this is gonna largely depend on the stocking of the actual aquarium. Your flow rates, you wanna go at least six times per hour. So this pump here does about 300 gallons an hour. So I'd be able to go upwards of 50 gallons. Uh, but if I were to use this on a 50 gallon, I pop this one off, I pop this one on. Now, it's good for 50 gallons. Now it looks like it's not sturdy, but it technically is. It's holding up all that. Now the slits we've cut in here should be about an inch in length. Anything longer and you're wasting the bottle. Uh, anything shorter and it's not gonna properly skim or the fish will be able to get over in top of the bottle. One inch because uh, about a half of an inch of this is going to be above the water surface and the other half will be below. Okay, let's see this work. Now into the aquarium it'll go and plug it in. Now this is going to be an exaggeration of how this filter could potentially work. As you can see, the water is overflowing into the uh, 
top portion through the top. Uh, the slits that I cut, I did it too quickly just for the video, but uh, you, you kind of get the idea. The slits are just too small. They need to be a little bit bigger or simply add more because what it's doing is it's sucking a lot of air, which is technically beneficial towards the uh, media, but then we get this problem, which again, isn't even all that bad. Uh, if I slow the, slowed the pump down, that will stop. So now you can kind of see the surface skimming that this does. It allows all the particles from the water to get through and get filtered out through that filter floss, but the fish can't go through it. This pump's probably a little too strong for my likings for this tank. And I, I mean, the ceramic media has a lot of trapped air in it. That's the problem right now, but um, look how well this works. So as water flows over, we're getting rid of that uh, protein buildup that you'll see. It's an oil slick sometimes at the top of your aquarium. A lot of the times it's just due to overfeeding, not enough water changes or surface movement. So this will eliminate that issue, uh, or at least take care of it until you have time to do your water changes and whatnot. Then of course the water, after being skimmed, it goes through the filter floss, being the water's being polished. I mean, if you want to use a sponge here to make it last a little bit longer, go for it. Look, even the fish are interested in it. Uh, but this is going to remove all of the debris from the aquariums and because we're using a filter floss It's going to polish it then the water's traveling through all of this biological media and that is Biologically filtering it. That's where the nitrogen cycle is going to take place once these trapped air bubbles get out of there It's not gonna look so bad, but again, we're doing this live type of deal And then the water's returned and circulated throughout the aquarium Look at the flow in the tank now maintenance couldn't be easier turn the pump off Pull the pull the filter floss out Toss new stuff in, and you're done. That is the extent of your filter, your new filter's maintenance. You don't have to do, it's literally the easiest I could think of. The only downside is, this is an eyesore. That is ugly. So perhaps maybe you use, a, you know, some ABS pipe or hide this, obviously, hide this behind some plants or, you know, something like that. So get creative to get rid of it. I'd love to see your, what you guys do with it. The fish just love it, the festivums. Now, what about maintaining the filter itself or using it for its other purposes? Like I said, this is also a gravel vacuum. Not only is it a filter skimmer, a water polisher, and a biological aquarium filter, it's also going to be a gravel vac. Okay, so we all do filtration maintenance every once in a while. We wanna make sure that we're kind of cleaning the filters. A Little bit of tank water. Get rid of the floss, take your biological media, and you want to rinse that around anyways, drain it off, and then your, your media is good to go. We don't want to use tap water or anything like that. We could potentially kill the beneficial bacteria living within this media. Why you got it off the tank though? Take some of your filter floss, jam it in there, all the way to the end, like so, right? Now, typically a gravel vacuum, you need to remove water. You're siphoning water out of the tank, maybe into a five gallon bucket. Not anymore. Now, we have a gravel vacuum. <laughs> See, watch this. Go ahead and gravel vacuum your whole tank. We're not removing water from the aquarium, but we are removing all of this waste, all of this uneaten food and fish waste and Everything you don't really want in your tank because it's just going to contribute to polluting it and cause you more problems down the road. Once you've got everything out that you want to get out, we're not going to turn the pump off until we flip it back upside down. And now you can shut it off. All of that waste now removed from your aquarium. Anyways, back to the public aquarium to get some work done. But man, not bad for 20 bucks. A filter that can mechanically, biologically, it can filter skim and it can gravel back. I hope you guys enjoyed that project. Look at this. Oh, so many things are happening right now. It's hard for me to even comprehend that this is actually happening. I hope you guys are incredibly excited just as much as I am. I got to get upstairs and edit this video, get it out to you, and then I got to get back to work. Um, everybody probably wondering what's all this paint all over me or why is my fingers cut, et cetera, et cetera. It just, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm like when I'm working on stuff. Even when I was building this uh, filter earlier, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but you can see somewhere along the video, I cut my finger uh, with the scissors. I can't even be using filters or uh, scissors. But if you want to learn how to do everything that I do and you want more information or you want the detailed, uh, you know, the nitty gritty, everything absolutely you could possibly learn about filtration, I wrote an amazing chapter in my book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself Handbook. Look at this thing. 
uh, the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself Handbook for the Do-It-Yourself Aquarist. Link is in the description if you want to pick up a copy. It's got absolutely everything you could ever imagine that you could want to build and take control of your hobby. Hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed this video. If you want more of these, make sure you hit the like button as well as subscribe. I don't know where I'm getting this energy right now. I'm exhausted. I'll see you guys in the next video.